In this video, I wanna share my three-step framework for coaching and performing pain-free step-ups. So after owning two personal training studios and one physical therapy clinic, I've had a good amount of time being able to coach a step-up. And what I've found is that there are clients and or patients that either have knee pain in general or say that the step-up causes them pain. And so what I did is I analyzed a lot of these patients to understand what is going on, what is the cause Common theme here. And what I found is that there is one common movement pattern that pretty much anyone that says they have knee pain during a step up does. And that one word pattern can be summed up as momentum. When someone experiences pain during a step up, they're usually moving through too much momentum. What I mean by this is if I go ahead and step up and get into a position here, when someone is going through a step up, when they go from the bottom portion to the top, the knee should only be moving in one direction. So in this portion, as they go to step up, the knee should only go back. And as they come down, it should only go forward. Remember my one common word, momentum. What happens with those that are, have pain when performing a step up is they use momentum. So instead of the knee coming back as it should when they stand, it goes forward and back in a momentous way. So it looks something like this. It shoots forward and goes back. And usually at that point, that's the pain trigger. That's what's causing pain. So that's what I wanna share is my three steps to make sure we avoid this momentous pattern to help our patients perform step-ups in a pain-free way. My quick disclaimer when it comes to step-ups is that ideally the height of the box should be specific to the patient. How do we know what that height is? Our assessment should tell us. So depending on the patterns of your patient, they might need to be at just below 90. They might need to be at 90. They might need to be above 90. But ideally they should be doing a step-up in a specific way that is improving their movement variability. Now if you have no idea what I'm talking about, check out the link below for the performance redefined course where I go into how to assess to find these certain types of patterns so you can get a lot more out of your exercise selection for your patients. So that brings us to step number one, shift. Once we know the proper height of the box based off our assessments, then we get into the step up and we first need to shift. A lot of times patients are starting way too far back. Now that's not really a bad thing, but it becomes a bad thing because in order to really step, they're gonna have to go through that momentous big forward knee bend and then knee extension. And that's what we're trying to avoid. So we can negate that by getting in our position and shifting so we have the center of mass forward. Again, how much your patient should or should not shift should correlate from their assessment findings. But once we're here, that step number one is to shift so we can start to feel the box and to start to get our body ready in more of a forward position. Step number two, squish. Now that we are shifted, we're ready to actually squish. So these types of boxes are great because you actually get the feedback. You're using a metal box or a hard one, you can't get as much of that squish factor, but you still should get the concept. So squish is all about pushing down through really our midfoot and heel to engage muscles. When patients have pain, when they go through that momentous motion that we talked about that we're trying to avoid, they don't have muscles ready or primed, right? So what we're trying to do is squish down into the box to actually feel the glutes, the hamstrings, maybe the quad, but definitely that glute. And I like to sit here for as long as it's needed with a patient to make sure that they feel the glutes before we ever attempt to stand. So use step number two to really help engage muscles by squishing through the box. Step number three, swing. So now we are shifted forward, we're squishing down, we have the muscle engaged, we're ready to stand. But instead of cueing the patient to stand, I like to cue them to swing. And what we're referencing are the arms. Two main things happen when someone is dealing with pain during a step up. One, they neglect their arms, and two, they can't produce power. So we need to get the arms in the motion more. And so by cueing the swing, they're automatically gonna know that they have to get their arms ready. 
two, when we start rotating and producing that arm swing, we're going to produce force more efficiently. So when we put it together, we have our shift. We are squishing, feeling the glute, not going up until we feel it. We get our arms ready. As we stand, we are swinging. And that swing is gonna propel a much more force generated step up compared to that very nonchalantly step up. Which one's gonna have pain? This one or this one? Right? Hopefully the answer is pretty obvious. Use the swing instead of the step to really help your patient reference the arms and generate force the right way. Step number four, slant forward. Now this is actually a bonus. We already understand the three steps in order to execute in a pain-free manner. But here's something important from a setup perspective. I like to throw patients on the slant board. What this does is it lets them be a little bit more on their toe and I actually usually tell them to do a calf raise, but when they're off the slant board, that momentous motion is going to be a lot more prevalent. When we're here in a calf raise position, the calf raise naturally pushes them forward. So it makes it a lot harder to go through that, mo that movement that we're looking to avoid. So throw your patient up on a slant board, cue them to do a calf raise as they're going through the steps. And as they come down, they're going slow and they're just going to that toe. We're not actually touching with the heel and then we'd be ready to go back for a motion again. So I hope you have a better approach now when dealing with patients that have pain when performing a step up. The big thing to remember is that we're looking for one motion, right? The knee should move back as they stand and should go forward as they go down. And we can achieve that by using our three steps. We have our shift, squish, and swing.